So we have a very uh, good pleasure to present our lecturer, that is Dr. Hugo Cuccini, with his presentation about understanding mixing, mixing strategies for drug substances process development and scale up. Dr. Hugo Cuccini is a, pro, a process engineer at UCD, Engineering Science Department, supporting scale up activities of drug substances processes from laboratory scale to manufacturing. And uh, uh, for us, it's a very uh, 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 exciting time to, to uh, wish you a lot of uh, fruitful wo uh, uh, presentation. And any question you have, please feel free to write. Uh, raise your hands in the panel, and we'll uh, pass the uh, question to Dr. Hugo Cuccini. So please, Hugo, you can start, and best of luck. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me properly. So it's uh, the uh, let me know if it's uh, uh, any problem. Okay. So let, let's I have say... a quite loud voice anyway, so it's really maybe not a problem at all. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's start. So this is a small uh, uh, agenda for the presentation today. I just want to introduce my company and it's uh, the work of the chemical engineer here at UCB. And it's uh, the focus of the presentation today will be on the crystallization development and basically, and what mixing uh, it uh, can do to support and uh, to, uh, uh, to support basic development of crystallization uh, uh, the transfer, the crystallization from laboratory scale to uh, manufacturing equipment. And we conclude with the, some uh, key highlights. Okay, UCB. Uh, UCB is a pharmaceutical company, as uh, uh, Moshe said. Uh, we are um, medium, I would say medium, small company. So we are more than 7,500 employees all over the world. We are present in the more than 40 countries and it's a, we invest almost a quarter of our revenue on the R&D uh, R&D spending so it's a big chunk of uh, the of the revenue uh, it's um, some of you may be familiar with the some of our key product so it's a, this is a bit of history of the uh, of the UCB I'm not going to go through but just a key point it's uh, the R&D side is present in uh, in Belgium, in uh, brain la since uh, 1972. So it's a long tradition, well-established uh, R&D uh, facility here in Belgium. Okay, let's come to our department and what the engineer, uh, chemical engineer does in, do in R&D and uh, UCB. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, Synthetically, as uh, Monche said, as already uh, uh, mentioned before, so we are looking after the transfer of uh, the processes from laboratory scale to manufacturing. So we are talking about uh, uh, milliliters, uh, liter scales in the lab uh, to uh, a thousand liters, uh, thousands of liters in, uh, in manufacturing scale. How we do that is so it's a, a combination of probably of uh, two uh, different uh, approach or uh, different mode of operation. It's uh, experimental work, lots of experimental work, uh, and uh, modeling tools. And it's obviously VisiMix is one of the key assets for us for uh, for uh, this type of uh, um, this type of work. So it's a, the uh, uh, modeling work is becoming more and more uh, critical for for the our investigation in the laboratory. We are moving towards uh, um, even more, um, I would say, um, in silico experimentation. So it's really the model prediction, a current model, mechanistic model available, mixing model available. It's uh, uh, it's, they have achieved such a uh, such a high level of accuracy and uh, um, ability to predict the complex situation, the larger scale. That actually, it's a de experimentation is uh, is uh, changing almost completely, or changing the, the way actually we are currently doing uh, in our lab. So this it's, uh, we are not currently doing it just yet. Uh, in uh, in the silico uh, in the silico more completely in the silico world, but it's, we are moving towards. 
um, very often it's uh, the is not one way or straightforward uh, type of work. There is a lot of uh, going back and a lot of the intermediate step, steps uh, we need to pass through to make sure that actually it's, uh, this model prediction or the model accuracy can uh, can increase uh, uh, step by step uh, to make sure that actually that then we can deliver the robustness that we require for our process in uh, manufacturing. So this is going to be pretty much the focus of the of the what you want what I want to talk today. Um, first of all, I just want to mention that the, the guy who actually did all this work, Selim. Selim is not with us today, but it's uh, for very good reasons. So, so uh, but uh, I will uh, present. Uh, I will uh, uh, go through some of the highlights of this work uh, uh, done together, um, covering body aspects, experimental work, and it's. Uh, modeling work using VisiMix. Okay, crystallization. Crystallization is a critical unit operation for the, as we know, and, and uh, for the control of the final product quality, kind of workhorse for the chemical purification of the chemical purification process to achieve indeed the uh, required purity. Uh, and, and not just the purity, but desired form and the chemical physical property of the powder uh, suitable, finally suitable for the formulation. Now, to make sure consistency, consistency is always delivered at whatever scale the crystallization is performed, we need to know not only what are the process parameters controlling the quality of the process, but also to understand the uh, physical interaction with the equipment. And, and this obviously, it's even more true for uh, multi-phases processes like crystallization. Okay, let's start from the uh, um, the problem statement, I would say. Uh, Selim, so it's us, we received uh, this crystallization uh, at quite late, uh, uh, quite late in development. So it's really, um, this, when we say late in development, there is a, uh, we have huge amount of constraint to, to do anything with, the, with, the, with this crystallization. And it was a problematic crystallization, with a seeded anti-solvent addition cooling crystallization. So basically everything was thrown at uh, the crystallization to make it work. Uh, it, was, uh, it, it is a primary control point for the uh, impurity genera generated uh, um, in the previous reaction steps and he had a significant uh, uh, robustness issue. So it's really a, it's um, on scale up, but not just on scale up, but depending on the process condition, mixing condition, uh, very often it's uh, the, uh, the tendency was after seeding, um, the, uh, uh, there was an increase of thickening of the crystallization up to the point of complete loss of mobility of the crystallization. So this is one, was not just an issue, a process stability issue, but obviously as uh, uh, probably many of you experience and then know, so it's really, this is a, uh, a robustness issue, which is uh, sooner or later, it's uh, uh, if you take into the plant, not just, it's not just, uh, you cannot manufacture the crystallization, you cannot, it's not just the problem, you cannot discharge the crystallizer, but it's a uh, you run the risk of probably not to achieve the quality uh, the consistency you want, batch after batch. So this is a was a problem to to tackle. But we also had uh, other constraints. So it's uh, we said uh, uh, we talk about uh, some more development constraints. So it's, it was a late uh, uh, development stage. So it's really uh, this means that the solvent mixture was fixed. So it's really the uh, in this case it was isopropyl alcohol and heptane. Uh, we were uh, constrained in terms of uh, what yields we want to achieve. So it's really, it's, uh, uh, it was almost uh, close to the end. Um, hence, I mean, for cost reasons. So it's really, um, and this means as well that actually it's the, we were forced because the product, intermediate product was very soluble in the solvents. It was very forced, we were forced to, to use um, high concentrated solution for the crystallization step. And above, we also were limited in terms of, uh, uh, term of dilution we could achieve with the heptane or the anti-solvent 
for impurity reason. So it's obviously we didn't want to more anti-solvent we are throwing at it, the more likely uh, to precipitate out those impurities we didn't want to precipitate out. Uh, and other constriction constraints as well uh, with the, uh, within uh, manufacturing equipment. So it's really, we don't have uh, a, uh, an internal network, so it's really, but we rely on uh, uh, an equipment, uh, on external equipment suppliers. So it's really, and very often that the equipment, we don't have much uh, a choice in the equipment that we, uh, uh, we have to operate within for, uh, for our processes. In this particular case, not only crystallization was low volume, so a small batch, and that was also a constraint, um, but the, the batch available, uh, so the vessel available, it was uh, far bigger uh, than, uh, than it would have been ideally, uh, ideally uh, used. And uh, with another key constraint, there was actually the, uh, the uh, uh, rotational speed of the impeller. So it's, it was fixed, it was not variable, and we couldn't actually do anything about it. So it's, uh, uh, I think it's probably some of you they will uh, recognize easily in a situation like this one. So it's really, but uh, what could we do uh, to, um, so what was actually the objective, the main objective of uh, our uh, old development work? So it's obviously ensure the key, uh, key issue, uh, possibility issue, mobility, but it was not just a processability issue, it was actually a robustness issue. Um, uh, I mean, so it, we, we wanted to make sure that actually the process condition were right, the mixing condition were right, and we wouldn't see in the scale up, any of the, we wouldn't have had any of this problem during the scale up. Uh, we wanted to have a process to which was reproducible in yield and performance throughout all the intermediate scale. Uh, above all, obviously we wanted to meet our quality target. So it's uh, on the on the purging of the of the impurity. Uh, again, it's a uh, Selim received uh, quite uh, late this uh, uh, this uh, this I mean this project. So it's really and uh, uh, so it's a day, there was a kind of limited amount of things that we could uh, uh, we could physically do in terms of timing and. Uh, and obviously the mixing and the modeling tools, so they came uh, quite handy in the respect to guide and uh, to identify the, the process conditions or, or uh, the, uh, the scale up uh, um, parameters with, uh, would have been critical to follow for, uh, to make sure that actually it's then uh, uh, we would have, uh, um, have a robust process on uh, manufacturing scale. So it's, his work is actually was in three, uh, I mean, it was, uh, can be divided in three uh, big chunk of activity. So it's a, one experimental work uh, um, section done on the, the two liter scale. And it's uh, looking at the process parameter, uh, limited amount of process parameter for the reason I explained to you before. Uh, and they were actually just the dilution of the uh, of the uh, concent of the uh, crystallization, the solvent anti solvent ratio, and obviously also the mixing conditions, so the rotational speed. And then it's uh, the another piece of work which was the characterization of the equipment. So it's uh, the uh, laboratory scales, uh, mostly focused on laboratory scales, but also characterization of equipment of the manufacturing scale to find that uh, similarity and then comparability. Uh, which uh, was uh, necessary uh, to identify for the scale up for the scale up criteria, and a final piece of uh, uh, final piece of the jigsaw was actually the validation of uh, the the whole operation and the whole process on the uh, on the on the um, industrial scale uh, crystallizer. I will take you through each of these uh, steps, so it's really which I believe they are all uh, interconnected. So it's a deal, um, the, uh, the equipment uh, we used in the lab is uh, pretty common. So it's, uh, I believe it's in every, uh, yeah. So it's uh, every, probably one of you is, uh, might be very familiar with this. So it's really, um, we use material uh, which, uh, uh, which was um, uh, 
been isolated many times, so quite pure material, free from uh, all uh, impurity and, uh, and so on. Um, we didn't look at the um, at the field level, so it's we work kind of ideal condition for the development of the crystallization itself on a two liter vessel. So with the and we try to maintain uh, similar geometry, similar. Um, um, for instance, uh, diameters uh, uh, ratio between uh, the impeller diameter and the vessel, um, similar to the one that we also have in manufacturing, with similar clear, clear clearance of the um, of the uh, impeller, uh, and also similar ge geometry of the impeller itself. But you will see, actually, it's quite difficult to achieve that too. So it's really it poses some challenge in that respect to, to generate then afterwards the model of the the mixing model of the uh, of the vessel I used in the lab. So it, and uh, we uh, throw at it uh, as many probes as we could. So it's really in, uh, in, in the contest uh, uh, we wanted to monitor and gather as many information as uh, possible uh, on particle size using FABRM on the uh, particle imaging with the PVM, obviously temperature and the baffle uh, it, itself. So really to make sure uh, not only it was monitored, but it's uh, the mixing condition was as, uh, as good as we could get. Um, run experiments. So it's a, we operated, uh, uh, we focused initially on uh, simplified crystallization. So it's really in this case was uh, uh, the crystallization without antisolvent. So it's uh, the analysis, obviously, of the, I'm not going to go into that detail, but analysis of the uh, solubility uh, would suggest actually it's a simplification of the uh, crystallization could have been possible. Um, we investigated, so it's uh, the uh, um, seeded Cooley crystallization just using isopropyl acetate. Uh, and uh, we uh, operate in a different range of uh, um, uh, dilution um, and that with different using different uh, uh, mixing condition so it's a um, gentle mixing condition so it's a very strong mixing condition uh, we clear uh, sign in this case that actually it's uh, the mobility uh, of the uh, uh, of the slurry was significantly affected by the uh, by the mixing within a threshold so it's a we within a uh, um, we didn't generate in any further background is again for um, uh, any granulation I would say of the experimental or, or the uh, uh, of the RPM or the mixing condition just because we are limiting them of time so it's we had to generate information in a very short amount of time so we identified the threshold for the mixing so it's really um, uh, which uh, was between 400 and 250. We fix uh, uh, this threshold for, uh, and we investigate then further uh, the dilution uh, effect, not not just uh, changing the uh, initial concentration, but also changing the uh, with changing the uh, solvent, the solvent antisolvent ratio, and the amount of. Uh, 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 the antisolvent added for uh, push it out uh, the uh, pushing out to the product from the crystallization so clear effect of the um, of the mixing but also clear effect of the dilution so it's really even in a very high supersaturating condition like the one included uh, uh, which included the actually the uh, heptane now um, I introduced you a certain uh, value, um, I mean, it's, we choose a certain, uh, um, just going back one second to the previous slides. So in this table, we choose a certain dilution rate with the criteria. And the criteria actually was dictated, dictated by the model, uh, the mixing model of the industrial scale crystallizer Selim generated. Uh, I would say very easily, Generated by uh, and, uh, by Vizimix, so it's really Vizimix. It's got uh, um, a, um, a wide database of uh, vessel design, uh, impeller impeller design, uh, baffling system, and so on. 
our industry is crystallized with pretty standard, I would say. So it's really a, uh, was mounting very large, uh, too large, in my opinion. But anyway, so it's a mounting and a very standard uh, retreat curved impeller uh, with uh, just one uh, beaver uh, baffle um, in the system. The challenge for us was, as you can see from uh, the uh, from this picture, was actually the the, the level. Uh, the field level for the batch, batch size which uh, we had it was uh, uh, was far too low for allowing uh, very good mixing um, and actually it's pretty evident um, after doing this that uh, the uh, the mixing model of the industrial crystallize was pretty evident would would other problem we would have faced uh, if we um, had to go for the lowest dilution, uh, lowest dilution, hence the highest uh, yield uh, performance of the crystallization. So it's uh, this another, uh, this another um, information we, we were um, uh, able to gather quite quickly uh, in terms of uh, vortex characterization uh, from uh, the, uh, the mixing model uh, on the, in the VCMix. So it, it clearly showed that actually at the lower a dilution rate up to um, below uh, 4.9. Uh, it's a, the the uh, the mixing was so intense. Uh, it doesn't obviously show the impeller, but does include in this calculation the impeller effect. Uh, sorry, the uh, baffle effect. Uh, it's a, so for for this mixing rate, we would have actually have a very deep vortex forming inside. That's actually something that we want to absolutely avoid because it's a really source of all uh, uh, type of problem in terms of uh, uh, robustness or stability or consistency uh, of the of the uh, of the crystallization itself. So we just simple this simple. Um, but very uh, effective, I would say, um, analysis that we were able to identify what was the minimum uh, um, fill level uh, it's, uh, or minimum volume we should have worked at for, uh, the, uh, for this crystallization. Um, and the, uh, this model actually was feeding all uh, the, uh, the development, um, the, the testing of the crystallization in the, in the lab. So at this point, so we had uh, um, uh, two pieces of uh, the jigsaw. So it's only really one on one side that we already had the model of the, the mixing model of industrial crystallize and uh, and uh, Selim managed to develop uh, to identify process condition pretty uh, rapid rapidly, uh, which uh, could have been uh, suitable uh, process condition and mixing condition above all. Uh, that could be suitable for uh, a direct scale up. Um, but actually, um, how we can make, how we could make sure um, the uh, the process condition, the mixing condition identified within the, the laboratory scale equipment uh, could have been scaled up in into uh, into the manufacturing crystallizer. Um, we, I, I explained you before, the manufacturing crystallizer um, had only one single uh, impeller speed, so it's really we are pretty much restricted in that sense. But actually, it was key for us to understand if whatever condition we performed that was uh, possible to achieve uh, with that uh, impeller speed. With mix, it is also uh, easy. Uh, there are kind of easy calculation to perform. So it's really a, there are option at this point. We didn't know what was the, the scale up, uh, uh, the scale up parameter we would have used for the, uh, for the uh, for indeed for the scaling up. Um, and there are, you can easily calculate uh, the uh, average uh, specific power input or the turbulence shear rate that the pellet. It depends on what you want to do. It depends actually the variability of this uh, this value and depend on what you want, what, what would you ask the uh, the crystallization to achieve. But in this case, it was critical uh, to evaluate uh, the the model, um, uh, the uh, the mixing model of the laboratory scale equipment 
to uh, to have a good prediction basically uh, and um, with uh, with Vizimix and make sure that actually this prediction was comparable with the uh, the the one used for the manufacturing equipment. So it's to verify the model, the mixing model uh, generated by Miss Vizimix for the uh, the uh, the two liter. Uh, uh, vessel crystallized we we went through a uh, number of steps uh, or operational steps uh, the um, uh, uh, experimental characterization uh, of the effect of the um, um, rotational speed on the power per unit uh, input on the two liter vessels then it's uh, the a number of prediction we're generating using vizimix uh, 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 accounting for different geomet geometry, more than different geometry, different uh, baffling arrangement for the two liter, uh, liter vessels. And that's based on that we select the model. So it based on the, we, based on that we, we were able to generate the full curve uh, for the, uh, the power period mass, which we could compare with the uh, equivalent model for manufacturing uh, equipment. Uh, this is uh, the laboratory uh, equipment we use. We use the, for the, uh, uh, the torque measurement, basically, for which measure actually the power pin input directly. Uh, and it's, uh, this is just the, just plot the experimental value against the rotational speed. Uh, it was pretty much in a very accurate uh, uh, visco uh, viscosimeter, um, which um, I, so we and this measurement were done in a number of uh, baffling conditions. So it's with the number of the probe in and out and uh, in different configurations, uh, with the but j with just the solvent system. And then it's uh, we uh, we plotted the uh, the uh, the measured value against the predicted value. That all of to select the best uh, mixing model uh, for our laboratory uh, crystallizer. Um, and uh, with that in mind, then we compare uh, the um, the predicted value um, the of the two. Uh, of the two equipment. So to basically identify in this case uh, the 400, uh, um, the 400 RPM what would have been the equivalent for the, uh, in this case, the shear rate, uh, the impeller uh, tip on the manufacturing crystallizer. Of this one, it was critical lot to say, uh, maybe this one in terms of timing, it's uh, maybe it just it doesn't, uh, uh, fully fully clarified, but there's actually this characterization was done ahead of the whole uh, experimental work, and actually we 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 knew already a priori what was actually the uh, it was more scale down type of approach rather than scale up. So this is really uh, the link uh, basically the uh, the process condition we knew we were forced to use uh, within the. Uh, within the um, the manufacturing equipment to the equipment we then used in the lab for developing the crystallization. So with this piece of work, we had enough information to say that actually it's enough confident as well that actually probably um, um, the uh, the mixing we had enough mixing condition. So the mixing condition with the right obviously fill level, uh, the crystallization of would the be able to perform on the larger scale, and indeed, this is uh, was uh, uh, um, this data actually they quite recently, probably in the last three or four weeks. So it's really the uh, no pro no problem whatsoever uh, into the uh, into the vessel crystallizer. This was pretty critical because it's really uh, it's uh, was uh, I think it's uh, we were already in the uh, in the first. Uh, uh, the first engineering batch, and this was the second, uh, the first validation batch as well. So it's in the both the batches so we we uh, we achieved the uh, performance uh, which we were looking for. So full mobility, the vortex. You can see a picture here. The vortex uh, didn't touch the uh, the impeller, 
and we achieve isolated we isolated the material in the with the purity and the yield and the form uh, we were looking for so overall uh, successful uh, implementation uh, thanks as well to the uh, combined uh, um, uh, combined work between the modeling uh, uh, mixing modeling using VisiMix and experimental work. So it's the, as, um, with this I, I, I finish. So it's really, but I just like to bring to you a couple of considerations. So it's a really um, general conclusion, I would say. So it's, um, I think it's, a, it can strongly stress how reliable mixing models are critical for the support uh, critical support tool for the process engineers in the pharmaceutical industry. So it's a busy mix, it's one of those. So it's really, um, and again, it's a, we are moving towards uh, um, more and more um, in silico experimentation and the balance between the two activity in silico experimentation, so modeling, and it's uh, um, in vitro experimentation. So it's a real experimental work is, it's moving more and more towards uh, the the in silico, so it's a reliable models uh, uh, um, model which are able to uh, uh, target minimize our laboratory work and its uh, effort in the lab. It's uh, absolutely key for us. Um, and then the other things I would like to stress: so, so the reliable uh, scale up is not just uh, about the identified the the right process condition, or it's uh, how understanding basically uh, how the uh, uh, process parameters uh, uh, can interact uh, um, between each other to generate the uh, to generate the quality, but also how these process parameters, uh, how the process itself interact with the physical environment. And I believe this one will give us when that is possible and. Uh, um, uh, and, uh, and, and completely, um, and we can fully rationalize the concept within models. Uh, it's uh, we will gain uh, a lot of uh, process flexibility, and it's uh, a much better accuracy and less chance of failure uh, during our scale up, and ultimately much better, uh, more efficient, and more economic processes. And with this, I think I can close. Oh, okay, so thank you very much for this very interesting presentation about solid liquid operation and crystallization development. I'm sure that the people in the in, in that participant here identify themselves with this kind of uh, of events and this kind of uh, process. Uh, constraints because uh, it really happen every day. You have uh, or a lot, you, you need to yeah. use your, your reactor for more volumes and and, uh, and, and you have uh, maybe no more material, very small quantity of material and you need to do your effort to generate high knowledge with very uh, small quantity of material. Uh, uh, I, I want maybe to ask if there any other question from the from the audience. But I, I want to ask you, uh, you, you present here pre, uh, precipitation with, uh, uh, with low quantity of material and you had here a problem of operation. Uh, did you, yeah. did you, uh, did you uh, uh, face this kind of processes, problems with other kinds of operations, let's say gas liquid or liquid liquid, uh, 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 and, uh, and you identify maybe that it is uh, uh, the same point or the, the same way to think? Do you have experience about it? Yeah, uh, it, it, again, it is all down to the, the way we, uh, we use uh, models and, uh, within, uh, within our workflow. So it's really the uh, models very often is the first protocol. So it's really we, uh, and especially uh, model like Vizimix, because it's actually, it's a, allow you to this uh, very quick implementation of the process condition and uh, to verify that if it's a larger scale equipment or for the batch target or the target size batch you want to work at. So it's really, it's the, uh, you have enough uh, 
uh, baffling to, to minimize the vortexing. You have in a good mixing or enough mixing for allow the suspension to be uh, to be uh, fully homogenized in your vessel. So it's really, and it obviously this is a common uh, is a common uh, uh, in all um, common problem. It's a common um, elements for wherever you have a change of phase, wherever you have two different phase mixing together. So it's really it's a, could be gas liquid, could be again crystallization mm. or liquid liquid. So it's really the uh, in, in all these cases, uh, the uh, having tools like uh, uh, Visimix, which is uh, uh, allowed a quick uh, assessment of mm -hmm. the uh, the manufacturing scale of the process conditions, we have planned it to scale up. It's a really uh, it's, it's it's very powerful. It's a very insightful because it's uh, not only immediately as it happened in this case immediately. Uh, you can uh, envisage uh, without the key potential issue, but it will drive it then afterwards uh, your experimental work in the lab as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really you identified the, the uh, as I mentioned, the the, the minimum steer level. So so the uh, the maximum uh, fill level you need to use. So it's really when you have other uh, restraints, uh, process constraints. So mm -hmm. it's really and so on. They are all key accessibility of models uh, like this with the higher um, reliability. So it's really, it's a key for what we are currently doing. So it's really for for moving fast through the development. Mm -hmm. So it's really- Very good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's we absolutely here, key. We have a, qu a question from Mr. Bikiak Maraur. And he asked about anti-solvent addition location will also impact the process. Could you please comment the appropriate location? Did you try to yeah. find it? Thank you, please. Yeah, this one was actually it's another another constraint that I didn't I, I didn't list them all. So it's, <laughs> okay. But this was actually another constraint of the equilibrium we were using in the plan. So it's really the uh, we went, didn't we, was not available at the a deep pipe, so it was a surface addition. Mm -hmm. But in reality, this particular crystallization was not uh, driven by the um, uh, the um, the rate of the um, how fast the crystallization was occurring. So it basically, um, slow we slow down the addition of the antisolvents as much as we could to minimize the impact on the um, uh, on the um, driving force so the concentration on the super saturation mm -hmm. but d was not enough as soon as the d seeds were added so it's really we were observing uh, this problematic uh, uh, problematic and prison mass as they call it here or caking mm -hmm. of the sure. of the system so, so, so it's the only thing which did work they were dilution and mixing mm -hmm. so really this question is the is a, is a... And your answer is really uh, representing what normally happen in your new constraint. Yeah, but yes. actually, it's a, this is a, this is was also uh, yeah. So this is a, this is something that you can also assess within the VC mix, for instance. Mm -hmm. And these are this is one of the things that we always do as well with the uh, VC mix tools because it's yeah. really the uh, we we have option to evaluate how the mixing performance change if the addition is surface addition or it's a bulk addition. Mm -hmm. So obviously not having the kinetics in this case, the only parameters we can uh, we can evaluate is the mixing time. So but again, this one uh, uh, was a kind of different case because of the nature and the constraint we were working in. But Mm -hmm. So I, I want maybe to add here that uh, normally it's happened that you are not you have no so capability to change the position, but if you yeah. have if you have the capability of course you have a capability to yeah. calculate the energy of dissipation in different zones yeah. in the tank yeah. and it will influence dramatically the dispersion Good. of the material you fit in the media and yeah. generate different particle size or even different polymorphs depending on how long you are feeding and where you are feeding. But about what will be the appropriate location, you know, always is depending the process. A, a different yeah. process, you will require a closed feeding feather or in the bulk, 
because the interaction that you show very well in your presentation is the connection, the so uh, uh, so close con connection between the uh, operation that you are doing and the, uh, the the capabilities you have to do and how to characterize yeah. it. Okay, and, yeah. and it is very yeah. important. We have another question here. Why did you look at uh, uh, power per kilogram versus energy per kilogram? Uh, I understand that the question is why, in general, we use power per kilogram. Okay. Yeah, these are actually the uh, the uh, the two options you normally look at when you scale up uh, a multi-phase system like the crystallization. So it depending actually on the on the. Uh, um, uh, what aspects you want to promote. So it's really homogeneity usually when you um, um, when you want to promote uh, for the homogeneity you normally would use probably the uh, power unit mass. So is the uh, um, uh, the the energy dissipation at the impeller tip is when uh, uh, you want to when you're actually looking for breakage so so what, mm -hmm. or what you want to minimize basically the breakage mm -hmm. i don't think this is was the case so, so it's really in, in our particular case it was the uh, uh, provide enough uh, uh, mixing to uh, minimize basically the the rate of crystallization so in comparison to the mixing time so it's really the and then the power penalty uh, power penalty master was actually the criteria we choose so yes and the, and the point is that if you are using for instance the average sometimes this is not representative so we have to take care that yeah. the, the average is some number that is is in between maybe two very different numbers that can generate completely different dispersion of material. This question was yeah. asked by uh, Mr. Hiram Ruvalcava. Uh, if you have any question in the in the participants forum, we will be very happy to, to hear from you. Um, uh, if you don't have more questions about uh, our uh, uh, presentation in general, the, the point is here in this meeting that we are trying to bring people like Hugo uh, are using BCMix and using this complex connection between models and experiments to bridge between this point and try to realize fast answer uh, to our process. And one of the points that you are dealing normally is that you need to, to generate the response fast. fast. For instance, Hugo can comment a little, no, no, not so deeply, about what is the stage normally you get these kinds of problems or questions. When you are in, uh, the in our case, uh, unfortunately, in our case, very often because of the nature of the molecules we're handling and it, they are extremely soluble. In our case, it's extremely soluble compound, so it's really it's the nature of the molecule we are producing. So it's really, and we run very often uh, highly concentrated crystallization with the mixing issue, mm -hmm. uh, controlling issue. So it's really it's uh, the norm, I would say. In, uh, it is the way to work. Us. It's coming to yeah, some indeed. point of characterization. Cannot, yeah, indeed. That's the, we, we cannot absolutely avoid it. So it's, we have to <laughs> do it in this way. Yeah. OK, so, so you are getting some process from the lab. And you, when you go to production, try to generate some characterization in order to yeah. avoid this kind of problem in the next step. Because you yeah. need to succeed in the validation anyway. OK. Yes. Yes. So uh, I think we finish our time. It is normally 50 minutes that we give all. And uh, I want to uh, give very, very thank you for your effort to generate this uh, presentation. I know that it's not easy and you are very uh, constrained with your time. And I, I want to thank very much to all the big audience we have here and for the questions you have. And please be continue to be in our forum that we normally are doing frequently one in two months. And we try to generate different kinds of uh, of uh, questions about uh, different kinds of operations. So we, we did gas liquid, liquid, liquid last time. Now we did some crystallization, solid liquid, and the bridge to the industry. That is a very important point that we want to share with those of you in this forum. So thank you very much for your time, Hugo. It was an explained presentation. And thank you very much for you. And be in contact more. Have a good day and good time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.